Whoa there. Before anyone appears from anything, make sure you subscribe and like the video. Also, since Tom left for America in the first game, that doesn't mean we can't have him in the second game. There he is. He's gonna be sitting on the top right corner where the clock is. So in case you miss him at any point, just look up there. The first thing we gotta do in this game is figure out where one Zai is and find out who or where is Miss, uh, Master Li Xiao Tao. That's the first thing we gotta figure out. But when we get off the boat, the first thing that happens to us is that some child and his parents or his grandparents scam us into paying the money. And after we do that, we get scammed by another guy. So immediately, the, the first impression that I learned that I got from this game immediately was there's a bunch of scammers around and I really gotta be careful. The second scammer takes a picture of us and then a woman tells us, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna find you later and he's gonna tell you to buy this picture from him, but you don't have to. Um, so we'll, so we, we'll, we'll go back to that, um, storyline later. While I got the impression that I knew that there was a bunch of scammers around, uh, Rio, sadly, didn't get the impression at all. Uh, some child comes out of the corner and is like, please, mister, mister, please help me. These guys want to kick my ass. Which, by the way, there's like three adult men who are chasing a child down an alleyway and they're trying to kick his ass. And I'm thinking, mm, that's that's really weird, man. Really fucking weird. Uh, turns out he was they were working together. Uh, so the first thing that happens to me is I get my backpack stolen, which has my money from the first game, and it has everything I ha I need from the first game, right? And also on my way there to to where to the point where I got scammed, I met Joy, who cannot separate from her bike. Everywhere she goes, her bike is in a close vicinity, or she's on her bike. So they steal my backpack, and they all separate in different directions, and I lose my shit, and I don't know who to chase after. I ask around, and they tell me to go talk to these two guys who are apparently involved with the whole scamming process. I go find them and they're drinking a fucking broad daylight, by the way. It's like 11 in the morning or 12, 12 p.m. at noon and they're fucking drinking, which is fucking ridiculous, by the way. What kind of delinquents do you have to be to be drinking at like noon, right? It's fucking weird. Anyway, we go ask them some questions. They, they're, they're, be, they're belligerent. They're being delinquents and they're not refusing to answer any questions. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to leave. I'm going to walk away. Rio goes to walk away, but then he fucking gets stopped. He's like, whoa, 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 dude. What the fuck? You can't just interrupt our, our midday drinking without buying us drinks. Buy our drinks. But holy shit, he it's fucking broke. He doesn't have any money. So we get into a little quick time event, which by the way, is still in this game. Uh, and then Joy shows up and she's like, hey guys, stop harassing this Japanese kid. It was like a presidential order that it immediately fucking happened. They just left me alone. Um, she tells us that Wong is actually in the park, back where we came from. Back to the little fountain area. We head there and Wong is fucking, Wong sees us and he fucking bolts and we bolt straight after him. Uh, we go into a little uh, uh, chase sequence uh, again with quick, so with some quick time events. You know, it's totally cool. I, it was anticipated. It was expected, right? We ended up catching uh, Wong and a little area with the people who scammed us already. And these guys, they're like, oh, wait a minute, you fucking chase after one? Dude, you're gonna fucked. Uh, I beat their asses quickly, and then I, I I go I go to fucking interrogate one of them, and then one is like, whoa, 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 stop, I'll just take you to where, I'll take you to where your backpack is. All you have to do is just follow me. And I go, oh, all right, cool. Rio goes and follows uh, uh, Wong. And by the way, this is one of the best thing uh, about this game is that they changed their their way of doing it, right? They changed their way. In the first game, the characters tell you where to go and then ask multiple questions to multiple people until you figure out where to go. In this one, if you talk to a child or an adult, uh, depending on like who you talk to, and they act as guides. So if you talk to a child and the child knows where the location you need to go is, you can pay them like five or 10 Hong Kong monies, Hong Kong dollars, and they'll guide you to it. They'll take you there physically themselves. They'll, they'll be like, all right, cool, just follow me. And all you have to do is just focus, like uh, use the first person uh, aim to focus on them and Rio would just follow them and you don't have to use the you don't have to use the controller or anything. So that's really cool. That's a really cool feature that they added. Another cool feature, they now have the ability to skip time. So if there's an event that happens the next day or two days from now, you have the ability to wait two days, three days, it doesn't matter how long it is. You have the ability to skip days and skip hours. It's not always recommended because at some at some point uh, there was an event that was supposed to happen two days from where I needed to be and I, instead of instead of skipping it I just walked around bought more moves and learned more things more skills so that I'm able to use it in the third game Just keep that in mind if you do if you do play this game and you want to skip around You don't want to wait around for the day Just keep that in mind that you can go walk around make more money work jobs 
or even make, uh, you know, or even buy moves, right? We grab our backpack and we go to find out where one Zai is, right? And Joy meets us again and tells us that we can stay at this uh, hotel called the Come Over House, right? The Come Over House, by the way, if you drop Joy's name, apparently, uh, the guy will just fucking let us stay for free, which is exactly what I did. Although he did rack up a tab um, and I never paid it, by the way. I refused to pay it. It's not because I was broke on money, by the way. I wasn't down on money. I had like 3,000 Hong Kong money by the end of the game. I didn't fucking use any of it. Oh, sorry. I had like 6,000. Sorry. I had like 6,000. I'll tell you how I got the money. Gambling, baby. <laughs> I gambled my fucking ass off. As soon as I got, as soon as I got my money back. Oh, sorry. By the way, I didn't get my money from the backpack. No, no, no. They took the money. They already spent it. I had to sell any item that I collected from the first game. So all the forklift uh, gotcha that I got, the Sonic toy that I got, everything I sold. And then I just gambled the rest of my money. I'm going to get to that later though. We figure out where where Li Xiao Tao was supposed to be, but he's not, but Li Xiao Tao was not actually there. Uh, we open the door and meet this fucking broke bitch that forced me to sell my shit. He's like, I'll tell you where Li Xiao Tao is if you pay me some money. All right. And he was very rude and about it. And I'm like, all right, you fucking asshole. Fuck you. Uh, in the same building complex that there's an old woman that we'll meet later. But just, just, I'm just letting you know right now that there is an old woman we'll meet later. I go sell my gotchas. I gamble a little bit of money. I make, a, I make around like $50 or so. And then I go to talk to this guy. And no matter how much money you pay him, you could literally pay him $1,000 and he wouldn't tell you any decent good information at all. He would tell you the exact same thing. He would say, Ah, Li Xiao Tao moved out of here. They went to a place called Manmo Temple. Sorry, no, they, no, he says, they moved to a place called Manmo something. And that's it. And I'm like, okay, Manmo something. Now that, that can't be, that can't be too fucking difficult to figure out, right? I can figure that out probably. I go to an area called the Wise Man Quarter and every single fucking shop there, about, about, I want to say like 90% of the shops there, they're called Manmo something. Manmo Herbs, Manmo Pharmacy, Manmo Kung Fu, Manmo everything is named Manmo. It doesn't matter what it is. Manmo Antiques, it doesn't matter. They're all named Manmo something. Alright, well fucking cool dude. Back to asking questions again. I ask around and they tell me that Li Xiao Tao is gonna be in Man Mo Temple. Probably, right? It's a probability. Go to Man Mo Temple. It's fucking locked. I'm like, all right, I have to come back tomorrow. So instead of going back tomorrow, I gambled the rest of the night from like nine, from like 9 p.m. to like fucking uh, like 12, just gambling everything. I made a, a decent amount of money. I gambled at $50 rate, uh, max rate. I gambled at $100 max rate. And then I gambled at $500 max rate until I made like 3000 and some change, right? And don't tell me I have a fucking problem, okay? I only have a problem if I'm losing and I never lose, all right? I never fucking lose in gambling money because it's so fucking easy. All you have to do is save your game before, <laughs> save your game before you make any bet and then just load the save if you, if you, if you lose. And that's what I did. I, I spent several days just gambling money because money is essential on this game. Not so much in the first game. The next day, Joy meets us downstairs and she tells us that she got work for us. I'm like, all right, all right. I'm like, all right, cool, dude. I don't fucking, I don't need work. I have like, I've got like $500 in my bank account, but okay, sure, sure. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go get some work. Uh, editor's note here. Every time Joy is on the screen, there is this extremely loud music that plays and it muddles every other audio. So I'm going to play a quick example. I just wanted to point that out that the mixin is horrible. Nothing. Let's get moving and get you to work. I work one day and I swear I never want to work again in that game because the entire job, I just, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to play it in the background right now. Just take a look at it. It's the entire thing is just quick time event and is, and it is the most inefficient way to move boxes. It's so fucking inefficient. Why does the guy tell me to go left, right, 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 left, 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 right, right, up, up, left, right, right, down. Why? It's so inefficient. Yeah, I don't need to do all that. I mean, granted, every box I move is like ten dollars, which ten dollars might seem like a lot, but if you have, but if you know that you can make way more money gambling with the guarantee that you'll never lose, ten dollars is fucking nothing. Ten dollars is a fuck. Ten dollars is fucking nothing when you know that you can just gamble and never lose. We head to the temple the next day, and then we meet one of the we meet one of the uh, quote unquote masters, whatever. Um, he's not actually. I don't know if he's actually. I don't. I don't know. His role was never actually established, right? I think he's assistant master. 
manager? I don't know. That's the best way I can describe it. Like an assistant manager. He tells us that if we want to have a meeting with Li Xiao Tao, we have to figure out who the four Wu Do's are. All right, cool. Well, I'll figure. I'll figure out what the four. What the, what? What are the four essential Wu Do? And I'll come back. So now I have to figure. Now I have to talk to uh, Kung Fu Masters, which I already know three of them. I know three locations. So the first one is in the park where we see a guy training, and then he, we spar with him, and then he tells us one of the Wu Do's. The other one is in a mall. Uh, he tells us about one of the Wu Do when we fix his relationship with his old master. The third one is a barber who uh, has a familiar name of the Three Blades something, right? Uh, by the way, that interaction is fucking weird as shit uh, because he tells us, uh, whatever you do, don't move a muscle. And then he puts a, a straight blade to our, a straight razor to our neck. Anyway, we end up learning three of the Wudus. And remember the old lady from the complex, from the building complex? Also, turns out that she's, a, she's also a fucking Kung Fu master. We help her out, uh, but she doesn't tell us what the last Wu do is. We have to figure that out on our own, apparently. I met Joy after the job, by the way, and I almost, I got scammed. The, the guy who scammed me comes up to me and he's like, honestly, just just see this interaction for yourself because I think it's the, the funniest shit ever. Look, oh, fucking, it's amazing how they managed to show how, how scammers work, right? Just look at it and enjoy it. I said no. All right, how's $30 then? You're bothering me. How about $10? I'm in a hurry. Please, no rush. I guarantee it's a really good photo. I didn't ask to be photographed. What did you say? Your face was asking. That's why I took the photo. Shut up and pay $10. Mm. Mm. What's for $10? Joy. Nice photo. You think so too? Well, I'm a pro. Oh, really? Well, take another one. I'll pay for both pictures then. G good, right away. Come on. Hey, I don't want any picture. Never mind. You can keep this one. And I'll keep this. Uh, hey, you haven't paid yet. Come with me. I'll pay you. <sighs> See you around. Uh, hey, wait up! I love the fact that he just said, Your face was asking for it! Fucking love it. Amazing. The last we do, we learn by going to the temple and seeing someone there work. I mean, so we seeing someone working there. And he's like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to clean this shit. Why do I have to clean suit off the wall? This is so bad. By the way, the most inefficient way to clean uh, is, is giving Rio giving Rio anything to do is probably the most inefficient way to do something. Like he sucks at everything, including cleaning. Uh, but we learned the last of the voodoo there by scraping uh, part of the wall. And it shows the last of voodoo. So we learned about the four Wudus, and they are Gon, discipline yourself to keep training every day without neglect. Great advice. Just like Gon from Hunter x Hunter, always trained, always had to prove himself. Don, be brave and stay calm to make the right decision. G, keep your heart free of sight and do not use force thoughtlessly or flaunt your technique. And Yi, always act without hesitation to- that's, a, that's just- Yi is just wanting to me. So we learned the four Wudus and then the, uh, Li Xiao Tao, we learned that Li Xiao Tao was actually uh, the 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 the, the, mas the female master, I forgot her name actually. Also by the way, Rio fully drops the most sexist line. The woman starts talking, the female character starts talking and then he's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm speaking to the master. And then he points to the guy. And then the guy goes, that is Li Xiao Tao. And he's like, Err. Anyway, she takes us back to her apartment. I know, right? Fucking wild. I was sexist towards her. I was rude. And um, she fully just takes us home and just lets us stay there. Uh, so I don't have to come back to the come over guest house, by the way, which means I don't have to pay my rent anymore. We go to sleep. We wake up the next day. And then she tells us that, hey, you got all these books. I need you to take the books and air them out. Worst fucking thing in the entire entire game ever. That's it. That's period. That's the whole thing. Just horrible. Just bad timing. Just bad everything, right? So at this point of the story, we have to figure
figure out who or where Yandazu is. That's the that's that's the guy that we're after at this point. Yandazu. We ask around about Yandazu and we learn that he wrote a book and that book exists in the library where we go out to air out the books. So at that point in the game, the library has already closed, so I have to come back the next day. I air out the books and I find the book in the back corner of the library and we ask Li Xiao Tao to give us the key uh, so we can so we can f find out where it is. She doesn't give us the key, right? She's like, "Oh, you're not ready. Your 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 mind is clouded by revenge. I don't I don't want you." By the way, that this this is the whole the whole this is the whole the whole fucking story with her, right? The whole story is like, "Oh, you're clouded with your judgment and whatnot. Your your judgment is clouded with revenge. You have to stop doing this. This is not a cool man." It's because her brother uh, Zimming w w also fucking went after revenge. He revenge he avenged his family. By the way, fully justified. Can I just say, if someone if someone murders your family, you're fully justified, you know, to get revenge. I'm just saying. That's just my own personal opinion. Yes, it is still very much illegal, but still justified in my opinion. In the eyes of the people, you're justified. In the eyes of the law, you're a criminal. Uh, she forces us to to uh, grab leaves that are fallen down and fucking... This is the worst kind of test because it shows that I'm patient. All I have to do is wait until the perfect moment to catch leaves. And once I catch the leaves, she gives us the key and then we find a little, uh, a little, um, a little drawing with four circles, right? Uh, four circles, one is up, one is parallel to the last one, and then one is down. The one in between the second and third one are down. Uh, and I have to figure out what that means. And then I go to, and then I go to, uh, uh, the, the old lady, the Kung Fu old lady master. Mistress? I don't know. Master. Yeah, Kung Fu master, right? And she tells us that it's a sign that that's how, uh, other Kung Fu masters connect with Yandazu. So I go to a coffee shop, and I make, make the sign with the teacups, and I wait. Someone drops me a note and says, go back to the come over guest house, and we'll call you there. We'll contact you there. We go back to the come over guest house. Still haven't paid my fee, by the way. And he tells me, uh, I wait there for until like 7 p.m. Uh, I get a call and then he says, meet me at the park or whatever, whatever, right? Meet me at Manmo Park. So we head to Manmo Park and we get jumped by these guys and we kick their ass. And we learn from them that they're also looking for Yanda Zoo. However, they're the bad guys. So we can't so we fucking, ooh, we can't trust them. But they tell us that Yanda Zoo usually makes content at a diner. By the way, the most bullshit thing happened in that fucking diner. I get to the diner and and some guy walks out of it and then I try to go into it and it's closed. So fucking fuck that guy for coming out of it. Cause what the fuck, man? After we make contact with Yonda Zoo's associate, the real one gets kidnapped and we chase after him while doing some quick time events to get rid of some thugs. And we save him. And then we learn that about the she about the Chiyu men. And we have to figure out uh who's been helping them. And turns out the delinquents that we met at the very first of the game at the very start of the game, the the dudes that were just that stole my fucking bag and left yeah we have to make contact with them so in order for us to meet the gang leader that we met at the first of the game we need 500 dollars. so we give them 500 dollars, and then we we go meet ren which is a well, part of the main characters and then we go on a giant chase scene that expands across multiple quarters and we go after him and then when we finally well we finally catch up to him he he sees the mirror that we own and is like whoa i smell i smell fucking money behind this hell yeah dude i'm fucking i'm about it man i want i want part of this I want I want to be a part of this. So I so essentially he joins me and decides to help me because he wants the money that's involved in this. Which by the way, there's no money. He says he's gonna help me find Yandazu as long as I give him a cut out of the money because he saw the mirror and he thought, ooh, there's money behind this. We say our farewells to everyone and then we leave Hong Kong and we go to Kowloon. That's that's the first part of the game done. Now we're going into the second part. This game is incredibly long, way longer than the first game. Besides the fact that it's long, th at least the, the progression of it is much much faster all credits to you suzuki the characters are all voiced there's more characters and you know it's it's all amazing honestly it's all it's all amazing so this part of kowloon is so incredibly confusing that i honestly have no fucking idea how i managed to get past this part without losing my fucking mind to summarize the whole thing quick time events that's it the whole thing is just a bunch of quick time events and fighting that's the whole thing i mean it's completely weird very very weird to to, to describe it any other way. We go meet a guy who apparently know where Yandazu is. Uh, we go meet him and then he tells us to go to another building and then we end up actually falling for a trap and get to meet Don Yu. Don Yu is a gigantic motherfucker. He's fucking huge. When he walks, the earth shakes. That's how fucking massive he is. He chases us around the building and then we go into hiding and then we end up back into Ren's place. Again, like I said, this entire section of the game is feels very muddled. Almost, I want to say, I 
want to say it's almost rushed. We go back to the guy that framed us, and then he tells us that there is this uh, secret agent, quote unquote secret agent, that's been uh, following uh, the the whereabouts of Yondazu. We go to his apartment. We basically, essentially, we break into his apartment, and then we look around and we find a bunch of tapes, and we have to listen through all the tapes. Thankfully, the game doesn't force us to sit through every single tape, but there is a montage of Ryu just like throwing tapes around. And actually, something cool, the last tape you do have to listen to, because that's where the conversation with the Yanda Zoo happens. But listen, listen to this sex, this side, uh, uh, this side, uh, little side story uh, that happened. So it's sort of like an Easter egg. You just listen to it and enjoy it. Uh, it's from the first game. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. So we listen to this section of the game that's required, uh, and then we learn that the character that helps Yanda Zoo, uh, the associate of Yanda Zoo, has been kidnapped by by Don Yu Men, and uh, uh, he's he's being kidnapped right now. And then we have to stalk a, we have to stalk the woman, which by the way, Rio is remarkably good. I, I'm sorry, Romero is very good at stalking this woman. He stalks her back to her house, and we find uh, we find uh, the associate of Yanda Zoo, and he gives us a key, and he tells us to go to the ghost building. And holy shit, that ghost building is fucking painful because there's no stairs there's no way for you to get to the apartment that you need to get to uh, but yanda zoo is in the is on the 10th floor and we have to fucking parkour our asses all the way up and if we fail we go we die and then we have to restart the mission here's what's bullshit about it when we reach the door ren just shows up there and he's like wait hold on a second how did you get up here and he's like oh i just used the elevator i i i strong armed one of the uh, one of the snitches and i got a key out of him and this is the first time where i actually saw Ryu visibly upset at like for no he just turns to the camera and goes mm, I'm upset mm, that's it mm, that's that's the whole thing he just looks really sad we found Yanda Zoo and holy shit Don Yu is right behind us uh we have to fight him and he's very very strong so we just have to keep fighting him until until the screen blacks out and then we get knocked out and then a familiar face uh pops up Li Xiao Tao which I completely forgot her name I'm so sorry uh but she goes by a different name not Li Xiao Tao she shows up and she's helping us uh she's helping us through our journey at this point we have to go inside don Yu's building don Yu's building is is guarded by everyone we go and meet a, a blind guy at a, at a completely different building and he tries to spar us and he says listen the only way for you to to, to win this is is that you don't rely on your senses just it's 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 one of the voodoos i guess we learn from that guy that there is this uh, that there's this scout that seeks out fighters and that's the only way for you to be inside the building is if you are a really good fighter and you go through as a fighter uh, so you have to go beat three guys. Uh, one of them is blind on his left eye. So I just step to the left and beat him. Easy work. The other one is just if you just spam all your... If you spam all your attacks, you'll hit him. The last one is if you grab him. And then we meet him and he's like, all right, cool. Beat these three guys. He gives us three pictures. The scout is impressed and he meets us and he's like, Me beat these three people. It's it's a, it's, it's t two guys and a woman. And yes, again, like Rio is an equal opportunist. So we beat all three of them. Thank... By the way, can I just say... Let's just... Let me just point out how fucking strong Rio is because he carries that woman with one hand extended by the way ex which is extremely difficult it's very very difficult to hold someone up with one arm extended the entire time it's fucking it's wild how strong Rio is we meet the scout again and then he tells us to meet him after two days that's where I spent my time just like buying random moves and whatnot we meet him in uh, in the sewers and Ren pops up and he knocks him out and he's like all right cool whatever uh Ren just fucking ruined the entire thing by the way fucking thanks Ren appreciate she had a big dog, but he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be left alone. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to lose any of the money. We are at this point in the Yellowhead Building, which this entire section is just a bunch of sneaking around and fighting goons until we reach the top floor. When we get to the top floor of the building, we first of all the floor is extremely polished. I mean, holy shit, you can see your reflection on the floor. Very impressive. Uh, but we fight a bunch of people, and then we f we have to fight uh Don Yu. And also, by the way, D uh, fucking Land D shows up on a fucking helicopter which by the way makes me wonder why the fuck did he just not drop off the helicopter beat rio and take the mirror is beyond me but i guess i guess he was reliant on don Yu to beat me which by the way fails i beat his ass uh he's very very easy to beat the only hard part is the quick time event uh where i meet him where at the last section I, I lost a couple of times in the quick time event but that's okay uh it happens you know we take yonda zoo back to the hideout and then he tells us all about the mirror and he tells us like where the location is and this is the power where we travel for China. So we go around, we say goodbye to the people, and we make our way over to China. 
And for this section of the game, is the whole thing is just a walking simulator. You have to walk and do quick time events. If you don't do the quick time events, you're gonna be stuck in a loop forever and ever and ever. And you have to do the quick time events. And I didn't know that I had to do the quick time events, but I ignored them. I left my control. I put down my control and I said, "Cool, I'm done. I'm done for the day. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna leave." And I left my PC on. I was recording the entire thing, and it took me like three hours to 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 leave this section of the game because the whole thing is just quick time events and random conversations throughout the entire thing. So please enjoy this conversation that I have with my friend talking about Mountain Blur. Mountain Blade, Mountain Lord, fucking God, what's it called? Fucking Mountain Blade. It's, I don't, I don't care what it's called. Mountain Blade Battle Lord. Oh my God, Mountain Lord. Holy shit. Uh, but yeah, please enjoy the video. Please enjoy the rest of the conversation, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys in 18 years for the third part because that's how long it took from the second game to the third game. It took 18 years or 19 years, give or take on 18 years. It took 18 years to release the third part. Yippee! So I'll see you guys in 18 years. Uh, yeah, please enjoy the video, and uh, don't forget to like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one appreciate it, love you bye still moving into it a romantic couple <laughs> they're not man they're friends what benefits yeah uh could be could be you know she uh, you know ryu has uh has a love interest back in back in japan he's in china right now oh yeah also by the way it was really cool i guess it's not really cool but this section here, I could just tell her to shut the fuck up and hurry up. That is amazing. <laughs> I just... But I heard it's a... It's a river to Pantom, brother. It was stolen by the... Killed? Oh. That's... Your father was... Your father was... Investigating us. Yeah. Causing multiple deaths. Yeah. I don't think I mentioned that to you, but... Just looking into this could get us killed. <laughs> Oh yeah, what those big deals? <laughs> Imagine just like riding a Harley. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this place just got a lot weirder. When we have <laughs> aren't there flashlights in this day and age? Yeah, there is. <laughs> All right, I don't know why we just didn't bring a flashlight. Apparently, we're too poor for batteries. Dude, batteries cost a lot. Have you seen what Duracell sells these days? Dude, just get the huge bundle packs in your set. Just pay a, a decent chunk, but then you have it good for like months. That's too much. It's too much, man. Cost effective. See, as a Mountain Blade Ban Award expert, I know your progress got reset. Shut up. <laughs> I'm already making hella money when I restarted. <laughs> I was making more money before, though. Father! I had workshops and trade caravans. And people working for me and i was i even got my brother married i had a child i had brothers and sisters i was gonna get a bitch i was the most charming man in the game my charm level was so fucking high literally if i talked to a woman her panties dropped it was fantastic <laughs> and i had so much money even if they didn't like me i could just buy them from their father it was the it was deluxe all right the rizzler calm down buddy <laughs> Literally, if, if you're just literally, if you just have like a lot of charm, you get free influence in the game. And I had so much, I was getting free influence just off my skill. The door's open. It's always been locked. What's beyond this door? I don't know. I don't know. Fucking, you just asked me that. I don't know what's in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's a Tomb Raider level. It's the one with the dinosaur? Yeah. Do you remember she fought a fucking dinosaur? Yeah, it's just, you know, everyday gal. You know how, do you know uh, how old the dinosaurs are? Take a guess. Let's say at least 80. <laughs> 80 what? <laughs> you know. Do you know that they're like 50, 50 million years older than Jesus? You know, alligators are also older and they're still alive. Crocodiles, alligators. Yeah, alligators. Yeah, shut up. Hey, wait. How can you how can you tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Well, one you see later, <laughs> the other you see in a while. Also one crocodile. you see later, and the other one you see in a while. Yeah. Don't steal my fucking joke again, I swear to god. It's not- it's not- it's not my joke, just don't ruin it. 
Alright. Yeah. Don't fucking, don't fucking beat me to the punch. Now I'm gonna go grab milk and never come back. Yeah, by the way, straight up leaves her. Wait, how did he know this guy was coming? I shall give you the family treasure, the sword of seven stars. Like, how do you know this guy was coming up? It's a good question. He didn't. Oh, so you just want to excuse to leave her. Yeah. That's fair. Here, there's a very specific purpose I'm leaving you here for. Not because I don't like playing child support. But it's very important and it has to do with your destiny. I think I don't think I don't think he was paying child support. It's nineteen eighty six, man. That's true. Sorry, nineteen eighty seven, my bad. What is it? Oh shit, my bad. <laughs> I didn't notice. I thought <laughs> I thought it would just play by its own, but okay, damn. I had to click square so the cutscene would continue. That's my penis going inside of you, by the way. That's it. <laughs> oh shit. There's too much of it. It's, it's too much Terrible. of it. God damn it. You and your fucking interactive cutscene. Holy shit. Just fucking put it in. This is what I say to, uh. To you. Foreplay? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. To foreplay, yeah. It's my, it's my penis leaving your body. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm levitating, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this is worrisome. In the midst of this pitch black night, a morning star shall bloom. It's crazy. <laughs> what is that poem? It has been told in the village from long ago. Like he says yeah. that under his breath, he's like, this bitch is, this bitch is crazy. Did you see the one second of ponytail physics? No. What? Her ponytail actually moved for one second. Uh, I mean, yeah, her pony. Oh yeah, wait. No ponytail. She, like, she has pigtails. Or, or pigtail, whatever. Yeah. The one who holds the phoenix. Oh, Shenmue Two, not done yet. Oh, so dude, I'm so happy. Dude, do you want to know when the next game came out? 2019. 18 years later, the third game comes out. God, look at this fucking dumb Please shit. Please be an audience clapping. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we'll like zoom back and it's in the theater. No. The story goes on. Story. Thanks. Thank you, Yu Suzuki. Thank you, Sega. I don't care. Skip. I, want to make <gasps> I didn't save. No! Oh. I have to go through that entire thing again. 